thank you. I, I figured I'm the last one before the break, so start with a quiz. Um, uh, data retention, the wet bewaar plicht telecom gegevens, uh, is logging uh, for every European citizen uh, who they communicate with, um, how long, and where they were at that given time. So I would like to ask you to think about how many times are you logged per day? So each and every day, from single, ba from small little babies to parents, to grandparents, how many times are you logged a day? So try and think about this. And we'll, uh, we'll see the answer shortly. All right, uh, bits of freedom. Perhaps you uh, might know the organization. We uh, existed from 2000 to 2006, but then we uh, got in a winter sleep. But now since one year, we're back with a vengeance. Um, we are the Dutch civil rights movement that defends uh, privacy and communications freedom in the digital age. So what are we, what, what are we essentially? We are a community. Uh, it's not about the three people that are our staff that uh, work uh, de from day to day basis or one intern, but it's about all those people in the Netherlands and, and communing them, forming a community so uh, to enable and facilitate the discussion and the participation to defend your civil rights. Uh, privacy in the age of databases, that's what I want to talk about today. Um, that of course consists of two elements. The first is privacy. So privacy is as old as humankind. In all the various different religious uh, writings, the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, there are some elements to be found on privacy. Uh, even in our, uh, uh, so in our uh, European uh, uh, Convention of Human Rights in Article 8, the respect for the private life is enshrined. So what is it essentially? Well, it it began, uh, began as a, uh, a bodily integrity, right? So you have the right to owe and to uh, manifest your own body as it is and no um, uh, fil faltering or whatever should be allowed. Then it extended to the house, to the private house. So not uh, state authorities, companies are not able or are not allowed to enter your uh, private home unless they have a warrant or some other reasons. Then when photography came about, and this is very interesting. When photography came about, it, were, uh, well, it enabled uh, uh, t uh, people to uh, instantly and directly uh, um, uh, capture them in their context and their relationships. So as a reaction on the emergence of photography in the end of the, of the 19th century, it extended, privacy extended to relationships. And then in the 1960s, uh, a very famous demonstration in Amsterdam as well, the Volkstelling demonstratie, which was about counting all the people. Uh, Alper already uh, showed a beautiful picture of all the Jews living in Amsterdam. Well, we, did, we didn't want that again. So then we had the informational privacy, privacy extending to information. But now we live in the age of databases. Well, you all heard this many times before. We live in, a, in, in the petabyte age or the network society. Uh, increasingly, people are able to communicate with each other and data is stored uh, in databases and this enables our society to form all sorts of different networks and all different sorts of contexts where these man networks can manifest themselves. So it's all about sensors, you know, in your mobile phone, uh, in your energy meter, in your car, in your, well, wherever you can think of sensors becoming increasingly cheap and databases, the number of them, uh, the quantity vastly expanding, and uh, all the information gathered by these sensors are, st are stored in databases. Privacy in the edge of databases, right? Okay, so make my point clear. I wanna, I wanna uh, uh, well, we are here at Mobile Monday. I wanna have some attention for the mobile phone. So how does this work in practice, yeah? The smartphone is, uh, well, in a couple of years, in 2012, as this uh, graph shows, the sale, uh, the sale of smartphones will uh, uh, um, be larger than the sale of desktop and notebook computers. So from 2012 uh, and, and, and from there on, smartphones will be uh, the thing that you know, dictates uh, more or less our relationship to information. Um, like Paris Hilton with her dog, 
we are increasingly domesticating information systems and uh, information technology. Uh, it's a bit like with uh, pigs. So data creation, uh, you have birth, then you have retention, then you have uh, processing, and then you have access, right? It's the same, it's the same with data. You have, uh, thank you, you have the creation of data. This is a list of, uh, well, basically every, or the largest uh, telecommunications companies in the Netherlands. And, well, they facilitate, um, or they are actually the sensor in our telecommunications networks. So, now I want to come back to the quiz. Um, how many times do you think you communicate on, a, on any given day? I want to give it to the floor. And before I uh, forget, um, this beautiful new Bits of Freedom t-shirt, which asks, yo, where are my bits at? is to be won by the person that is most close to the number of times you are logged per day. So, give a shout. Huh? Thousand? Forty-two. 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 Can I hear something more? Come on. Ninety-five? No. No. Huh? Okay, I think we have a winner here with uh, 250. I would like to have my lovely assistant. Uh, yeah, there she is. 250 times a day, you have won the beautiful Bits of Freedom shirt. Okay, let's, let's give him a hand. So, figure this. <laughs> that, by the way, is uh, Yildau, our intern, our lovely intern. Give her a hand. <clears throat> All right, so think about this. 225 logs of with who you are communicating, for how long and where you are at any given day. This is for mobile telephony and for email, log on, log off um, uh, on the internet and internet telephony, of course. That is six uh, or every six minutes, your location, your personal network is logged uh, for, the day to, uh, for the state to access. And then the customer data, so your mobile uh, telephone number, IP number, your email address, uh, well, you name it, customer data is uh, uploaded to this central government database, the Centraal Informatie.Onderzoek Telecommunicatie, CIOT. So every day your customer data is uploaded to this database of every single person in this room. And even now, as uh, I'm saying this, there are plans to extend uh, this pro, uh, daily upload with your traffic and your location data as well. So in a couple of years, if we don't rise, your, uh, not only your name, your IP address, your telephone number, but also with who you call, how long, and where you were at that given moment um, is uploaded in a central government database. And this database, as we speak, is accessed three million times a year. This is quite a lot, if you consider we're only 60 million. Right, in this uh, article uh, in NRC, you will see that the rise of this three million uh, number is 33% per year. So uh, imagine where we are uh, in 10 years. 10 years ago, we were uh, only at 150,000. So, this makes us number one per capita in the European Union. In the Netherlands, here we are. Um, the results of these sort of developments are that we, uh, uh, while the most beautiful thing is happening uh, as of now, we get mobile phones, we have the opportunity to network with each other, we, our trust in ICT is, is vastly decreasing. In Germany, of course, they had 20 years ago uh, some sort of a nasty experience that we don't have, but 50% of all Germans uh, refrains from communicating uh, through ICT with their uh, doctors, with drug clinics, with um, uh, psychiatrists, because they know they will be logged, and they know this information can compromise them. Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, there is a very interesting trend as well. I'll come back upon this later. So, privacy in the age of databases presents us with a, a huge, huge and very important question. We have these opportunities to 
tackle global warming, to raise, uh, allocate uh, resources more efficiently. Uh, we, we live in the most beautiful and exciting times, but at, at the other hand, it has a dark side. Do we really want to be logged each and every movement we do? Do we really want that? Well, uh, at Bits of Freedom, we uh, think a lot about this. And we think we've come up with a quite a clever solution. Well, these smart systems, they require smart solutions. So we started off 2,000 years ago with the body. Then came the house, then the relationships, then the information. What would this smart solution be? Of course, it would be extending the protection of your civil right to privacy to databases. How would you do that? Well, probably a lot of you have already heard uh, of the term privacy by design. That is ground rules that you should take into account when you design a database. Um, uh, there are some sub, su you know, privacy by design is quite a vague sort of buzzword, but that means defining the goal very specifically and clearly before you start building the database. Uh, consider OV chip card, the transport, uh, the national transport card. The goal of this transport card was to check whether people had paid uh, their ticket. And it was, perhaps, to more efficiently uh, um, allocate uh, resources and more efficiently build the tr public transportation network. So why, tell us why, is every single movement of every single OV chip card holder on a personalized basis locked for seven years? This was never the goal of the database. Well, what of course happened was when the database got presented to the government, the government said, hey, well, that's interesting. Let's lock that for seven years. That was never the goal. And there are many other sub-criteria, but I won't go into that because of the time. So think of privacy protection when you design the database. Then, transparency by design. Build into your database the, the, the utmost transparency possible. Uh, Robert already... Uh, 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 came upon this in his presentation, but if you have transparency in your database, then you automatically will protect the privacy of your users because you don't want your users to know uh, what the heck you're up to. If, for example, advanced technologies, uh, which uh, launched a quiz that two and a half million Dutch people uh, uh, participated in, it's called www.jeechteleeftijd.nl, uh, yourrealage.nl, if all those two and a half million users would have known that this data would be sold to Pfizer, uh, the maker of Viagra, um, then perhaps not two and a half million people would have participated because one of the questions was, how often do you masturbate per day? So transparent. Be transparent on what you do. Be transparent on what, what happens with the data. And then anonymity by design. If you don't need to know the identity of your users, just don't. We don't need to know uh, where every single user is going uh, by train. Uh, we always had the tickets, so why do we now need to know the identity of every specific person and every movement uh, when we didn't know it, knew it in the first place and when it wasn't the goal? And then a very important last uh, uh, sub-criteria, that is user control. Give users the, the, the power and the control over their own data. Consider the electronic patient dossier, the electronic uh, uh, medical records uh, dossier, where, uh, you know, I've, I've done some stupid things in life and I, I was in hospital, but that's absolutely not relevant for my personal medical record for the coming 50 years. You know, I was a student. I was at parties, I drank too much, I, I was in hospital, but if I want to have the power to delete that from the database, I should have that power. And it's absolutely irrelevant for the rest of, the, for, for the rest of my medical history. So give end users the power to control their own data, and, and, and then you'll be safe. So these four things, privacy in the age of databases, should always be on top of your mind. Privacy by design, transparency by design, anonymity by design, and user control by design. 
of course, users can always, like in Facebook, can choose uh, if they want to disclose more data. But start at the anonymity level and give the user the control. Because in the end, in the age of databases, do you want him to control the databases? Do you want him to control your data with the databases? Do you want these guys to control the databases? Or do you want this guy to control the databases? This is Fred Teven. He is the state secretary of the Ministry of Justice. Only seven or eight years ago, he said, well, privacy is for villains if you have nothing to hide. He is controlling the 225 logs on your personal data per day. You have to reassume control. And you can do that by pleading, by asking, by granting for, this, for control, by asking where your telephone data is. And, you know, of course, by buying some t-shirts. Yo, where are my bits at? Always ask yourself this question. Because younger people, this is a recent survey, only last week, 85% of uh, children under the age of 18 don't post everything on Facebook and have private settings on their profile. That's because these young kids, they know where it's going. They know that every picture, every log, it can come on the, on the Geen Stel web log. Uh, it, in five years, it can compromise you. So this is, this is important. Younger people are starting to realize, and you should as well, uh, that you're doing this. Just on a side note, the CEO of Google uh, uh, announced a couple of months ago that, you know, every person at the age of 18, you know, if minorities put something stupid on the web, they can just change their name. If you don't want your uh, house photographed on Street View, you can just move. You know, so that's the sort of real life, online life uh, thing he's, he's, he's uh, uh, propagating because, of course, his legitimate interest is keeping as much data as possible. But remember, it's you that's in charge, and uh, keep it that way. And uh, uh, tell about, uh, talk about this uh, with your friends. Raise awareness, because as a movement, you really can uh, have uh, uh, you know, real big impact. We had, uh, for example, in the, in the five big political parties, we had 10 amendments changed in their um, election program. Um, so, in effect, we wrote the, uh, the policy for privacy and civil rights uh, on the internet uh, in the Regier Accord, so in the Government Coalition Accord. Start the movement, assume control, donate, and get involved. Thank you very much. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, Axel. I think there are a lot of questions in the audience, so let's take one or two just before we go into a break. I see there one. Anyone else? Okay, let me go to Stefan. Is it okay if I hold the mic for you? Hi. Um, I was wondering, um, would you agree that uh, there has been a certain model of man behind our privacy legislation, a certain fearful image of people, that, you know, of individualism, that we, ha that we fundamentally are disconnected from each other, and maybe this could become something new now, in the sense that what I'm, what I'm actually proposing, are you, can you hear me? No. <laughs> uh, can't we use data in general also as a sort of matching engine, so that the more data you put out, the more like-minded people you find, and that this will become something which is a new kind of privacy. So privacy becomes not wanting to minimize your interaction with other people, but to maximize your interaction with other people. Mm -hmm. Well, um, consider the case of Facebook, where everything you upload is uploaded to a database in the United States. Of course, the alternative would be uh, enabling uh, um, social networking, because social networking is ravingly cool, but uh, storing the data in your own house. And Diaspora, the alternative to uh, Facebook, is starting to develop, and that's exactly uh, uh, which will enable perhaps matching, finding friends, but always having uh, 
reclaiming uh, the control over your data and storing it at home. Um, if we, you know, set a step back, five years ago, Facebook was non-existent. Uh, imagine where this is in five years. Just like all per uh, schedules, you know, there are two ways to go. Uh, where, the, where we go to the zero privacy uh, uh, scenario. I don't think we ever uh, will be there. The other scenario is, of course, that you always have the control of your data. You know, if I want to go around and walk naked on, on the street, that's absolutely fine, you know. But I have the, the, the autonomy over that decision. If I want to, uh, you know, if I'm proud of my life and I put everything on Facebook and it's for everybody to see, um, as, soon, uh, uh, as long as you know what that decision implies on the long term uh, or uh, on the short term, uh, that's fine. It's all about the user control. We should uh, keep the user central. Yeah. Thank you, Axel. I know this will be a discussion during the drink. So uh, before we go into the drinks, I want to thank you again and move out of the way of the speaker. Thank you, Axel. Give him a, another applause.